up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 26 of the overview. You're always laughing, Jason, when I when I do that. So it's so distracting, man. Now I'm Jamie MV, and uh, joining me today is, of course, Caster Fish Sticks, fresh off the Overwatch Open from it was London, right? Over in England. Yep. yep. Uh, I was gone for three freaking weeks. London, clone, London. Just got back last night. As you can probably tell. Like, <laughs> He's, got like yeah. He's got uh, the bags. <laughs> uh, I usually don't look this terrible, but yeah, uh, it's mainly because I was just on the road forever. Yeah. It's, it's okay. It's it, could, it could just be some, you know, makeup. You, could, you know, makeup that's still left over from all those those cats. Um, but also joining us today, Jason from the ESL studio, because he doesn't have internet and he won't for a month. What? Yeah, Germany. It's great. <laughs> so excited. Yeah, I have to, I have to come in here. A whole <sighs> month? So the speed is really good in Germany. Like, I can get 100 down, 10 up for like 20 bucks a month. That's crazy. But the infrastructure is terrible. So they're having to like put new lines down to catch to the building I'm in. And then I have to go through the whole annoyance of actually scheduling it to be done. And then they'll obviously miss their appointment. I have to come back again uh, another time two weeks later. It's just good times. What happened to German efficiency? I don't understand. <laughs> it doesn't actually exist. It's just a myth. It's a stereotype. That's not even true. That's crazy, man. I can't imagine being having no internet for a month at home. That would really be appreciate hell. my 3DS and Monster Hunter. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It gives me a lot of time to wash my dishes and cook as well. Catch up on that console. If I were you, I would just stay at the studio and, like all night. <laughs> Instead of get a sleeping bag. Just, just. I've just actually lived here before. Don't even joke. I lived here for <laughs> I think, a month once. When I first moved here, it was it was terrible having people walk past me working because I'm still asleep at 10 uh, 10 a.m. in the morning, oh, and then I wake God. up, go upstairs all the way, go shower, come back down. Hey, I'm ready for work. Oh yeah. God, that would be crazy. <laughs> for a month, <laughs> that would be crazy. You slept on the couch, or is it? Did you bring a couch? Actually, yeah, legit. So where our arena is currently, which is like straight downstairs from me, mm -hmm. um, we had this big open area, and I slept on the couch there. That yeah. was between our smaller studios and where we were working. And so people would walk past me all the time, and they would see me on the couch just sleeping. It was, it was really awkward. But you know what? I sure as hell damn slept well. So, <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, well, so this week, uh, our episode this uh, today, not the fullest episode, I have to say, but it might give us some time to you know, for you guys to ask some questions that you haven't asked Jason already on his AMA. You know, that's on Reddit, right? <laughs> already. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about, I guess, the PTR of season two, real quickly, and then some esports event news like uh, the Overwatch World Cup rosters being announced, and uh, some other team news, uh, as well as just our event recap. We'll have Ben kind of lead us through the Overwatch Open, given that he's been casting it for a solid week, week and a half now. So. Uh, we'll find out some some interesting upsets and results uh, from that tournament. At the end, again, just tweet your questions at ChamMV, and uh, or you can just tweet them in the Twitch chat when it comes time for Q and A. Read some of those out. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about season two and the PTR. Uh, it was announced that season two is going to be starting on September sixth, so that's going to be next Tuesday. So not not today, like a lot of people, I think we're we're. Uh, speculating as to maybe when the PTR, everything on the PTR would, would be rolled out. Uh, so one more week, one more week of, I guess, grinding on PTR. If you guys have been playing competitive there or just, again, just checking out a lot of the changes. So have you guys gotten a chance to play at all? I know you guys have been so busy and there was no internet. Any kind of playing so nothing, right? Okay, all right. Literally not even once. Like, oh, just got back yeah. last night. Uh, you know, I, I get there could have been opportunities to like squeeze games in between casts, but no, yeah, we had to watch the games and analyze them and stuff like that. Like, had to work. <laughs> this last week was literally get to the face at studio at like 3 p.m. Uh, British time and then cast until like 3 a.m. or later. Oh, so like you, you sleep and then you get up and you go back to the studio. Like that's all you all we had time for. Right. So so no, not yet. Looking forward to two, though. Not a problem. Yeah. So I've got a chance to play a little bit. I haven't been you know one of those guys that have just been basically playing the PTR as if it was, was the, the live competitive mode. Uh, just because, I don't know, I just feel like it's a waste of time. You know, part of me is just like, I was just going to reset anyways. Like, why, why, do, why would I do that? So uh, I have played some of, some of the competitive just to see some of the, you know, just the changes, at least to the modes or, or the, you know, just sudden death being removed and all that. Uh, but I did get a chance to play the map, the, the new map a lot more, just because the Tavern Brawl has been the new map. And 
I don't know. I like it. I'm starting to like it more and more. The the, the Wait, more you I say play. tavern brawl. Oh, not tavern brawl. Sorry, the weekly brawl. Yeah. I got Hearthstone. I got Hearthstone. I got Hearthstone on the brain too. Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, the the weekly brawl. Sorry, sorry. Um, so I got a chance to play. Is it Eichenwald or is it Eichenwald? I hear people like calling it all kinds of different names here. So uh, apparently the C H is sh. Okay, so I mean I honestly, should, Jason should I be should able to it. to. Yeah, as Jason, far as you, I know, you speak it's... German by now. You've been there yeah, for no kidding. years. Totally. As far as I know, it's Eichenwald. Okay, that's what uh, I thought. I asked, them, yeah. I asked the German. They said no. It was like Eichen, Eichenwald. I don't know. Eichen the Wald. W's a okay. V sound. Yeah, and definitely the, e, the W's. It's not Valdi. Yeah. So it's <laughs> Eichenwald. Okay. I know Eichenwald right. sounds so much more like important. I don't know. It sounds it sounds way better than Eichenwald. I agree. It sounds more German at least. So. Well, yeah. but if it's Ice involved, then I got a chance to play it. I, I've uh, definitely been enjoying it. Been s getting sniped a lot <laughs> lately whenever I don't play tank, uh, which you know hasn't happened <laughs> quite a bit, at least with my games. So it's it's kind of nice to see at least some more widows and some more mercies being played. Um, but yeah, you guys should try it out though. It's I, I I'm curious to see when the pros will start picking it. Or at least the pro teams will start picking it and trying I mean, it out. I mean, most teams still don't even play Route 66. I know, right? So it's just like, will they actually incorporate it? I mean, obviously there's going to be some teams that are just like, hey, we can use this as a, a cheeky pick against you. Uh, mm -hmm. And like Reunited did at first with Route 66. But I don't know. I hope teams, I hope teams play it. It's a really nice map. I, I, from what I've seen, it's really nice. I obviously haven't played on it too much. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what's really interesting is the fact that there was a big nerf with Lucio. And now Mercy seems to be replacing him in the meta mm -hmm. and that is that's honestly like huge it's, it's actually way bigger than i think most people out there who aren't actually competitive players realize because a lot of teams depended on that lucio speed boost to engage mm -hmm. disengage or to re-engage after something yeah 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 i mean lucio have been a staple of the competitive meta since forever mm -hmm. never really dropped out at any single point uh so the fact that his speed boost is now nerfed by about 30 percent is it's hugely significant i think can't remember where i saw this uh, someone had suggested on reddit or something like that that maybe instead of like maybe you nerf it down to like 50 percent even uh but you just extend its duration or something like that it's like right now 30 percent it's like a pretty big nerf and mm -hmm. there's also a nerf to zenyatta and mercy has been buffed so it just seems like mercy is going to find her way back in really quickly here yeah, and I think that's the point, too. I think uh, for, for some reason, I feel like this change is, is trying to encourage Mercies and maybe even bring back Farah. Uh, definitely it's the change just to Soldier, obviously trying to bring that back. And we can talk a little bit about that. I mean, they, they, they've obviously made some big changes to Hanzo and Soldier, and they've been, kind of, they've been tweaking Hanzo a little bit, you know, changing the size of the projectile, you know, his ability to, to his mobility right now. Um, projectile speed as well, right? Yeah, his projectile they, they speed was speed. increased by, by a lot. Uh, but... I didn't actually notice the projectile size, but that's the last thing they changed was actually making it a little bit smaller. Apparently, it was getting <laughs> so very easy to take. It was like very easy to snipe people. So, uh, I suck at Anzos. I never play them. <laughs> uh, but it'll be interesting to see if we we actually see more Hanzos. We we probably won't see it in the pro scene, but maybe at least just some more on the ladder and just have I people think we rage. Actually... Well, the thing is, we do see Hanzo a little bit in the pro scene. Um, on cert yeah, King's yeah, Row. In more particular. than ever right now. Oh, on King's Row, that's um, true. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we saw any other maps on the Overwatch Open, because I, again, didn't get to see it. Um, but Kib, like, from what I can remember at the Gamescom tournament, at the Overwatch Lens Showdown, Kib got, like, a triple kill on the initial attack <laughs> on King's Row with Hanzo. And that's and old Hanzo. <laughs> yeah. That's old Hanzo that moves slow when shooting, his projectiles are slower, and it's also the old... Or, not old, but like it's the current uh, projectile size. So yeah. they're they're reverting the projectile changes from a couple patches ago as well. So that's kind of like a one, two, three punch of buffs for Hanzo potentially, which is actually terrifying. Like <laughs> I could see Hanzo just being ridiculous now. Um, hard to say, but it's the Sonic Arrow, I think, more than the Scatter as well. Like the Sonic Arrow, the information it gives you is mm -hmm. it's so much more powerful than like anything. Like, there's nothing really kind of compares to except Widowmaker's Zen for Sight because you can literally have the whole team see them coming around a corner. And I guess, you know, the Zenyatta orb was kind of similar with Discord the way it originally was where it didn't mm -hmm. fall yeah. off a player. So, like, the Zenyatta can see when someone's coming around a corner, but the fact their whole team can see where they are and actually get the initial attack, like, the initial bullet off coming around a corner completely shuts people down. Mm -hmm. So you think this is going to be ha have to be in tandem with the Mercy? 
it just the inclusion of Mercy back into the meta. I mean, you know how kind of Mercy Widow has always been a pair. I mean, Mercy Hanzo was that a big thing in the past? I don't, I don't remember really hearing that much about oh, that. Not really. But yeah, yeah. So I guess Hanzo doesn't really need the Mercy to be there. At least the damage boost. Um, okay, so Soldier, Soldiers. Uh, they they definitely changed that. They definitely reduced the time from which the the scatter kind of resets. Uh, it's all, it's a three shot burst now, and then it resets really quickly if you you know if you do end up getting a spread. And for the most part, it sounds like the player base is generally happy with it. Um, there was this video that was saying that there's no difference, I guess, in terms of burst speed, but uh, or there was that video that, that even talked about it being worse because it, it, like in the training facility they were showing it. But I, I think the conclusion now at this point by the community is that it's it, it was for the better, and I don't know if it's going to bring Soldier back, but. I don't know. What are your thoughts on it? Firing three shots at a time and, and restarting? Was I don't know. Impossible enough? to really give analysis without playing it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I just want my old soldier back. Like, I really st said this in previous shows. I just mm -hmm. don't think he was really OP before. Like, yeah, he was really, really good in a lot of situations. But every character should be really, really good, I think. You know, the Dota 2 balance methodology of the every character soldier. needing to be OP. And the current McCree... Current McCree? Yeah, current McCree for sure. <laughs> or no, the old soldier and the old McCree were like the old McCree has in like last patch McCree when you could you didn't have damage drop off or not as much anymore before they tweaked it down like another oh, ten meters. Long range, left click. That yeah, that yeah. would be pretty insane. Well, because I mean, an assault rifle to me isn't meant to be like a sniper rifle, like a revolver can be. Yeah, which, I guess. In turn, still doesn't make any sense. Now that I say it out loud, but I don't know. Yeah, assault rifle. I don't want to see sniping people from across the room. I want to see you know someone who's one-shotting people like that you know left clicking once instead of bursting like a four bullet burst i don't know it's i don't know if it'll replace reaper still in terms of like what are you supposed to do like in terms of taking down shields really quickly mm -hmm. um but again like fish like said it's kind of impossible to really give a, a really good strong opinion on it until you touched it and you played it and yeah and seen it all right well that hopefully um i don't know hopefully we'll see some soldier i'd like to see some soldier too at least a, a mixture um, I feel like it's either or. It's been mutually wonder, exclusive with with uh, McCree. I wonder if we'll see more Anna now, actually, instead mm -hmm. of Lucio. Like what? the Discord orb's really strong, but remember when every team ran Mercy and it was like, all right, wait for the whole team to die, then pop a five man res. I wonder if we can see that the Anna used to actually counter that by killing the Mercy off by allowing a Genji to get in the back line against you really quickly because you can just bypass everyone and not worry about dying, kill the Mercy off, and then you have a fight that you pretty much can't lose. I don't know, is Zen Orb really needed necessarily in that kind of case if you're trying to go for the eliminate the mercy comp or strat? Yeah, maybe. I, mean, <laughs> I was hoping for maybe some discussion or something. No, I mean, I, I think that's. I don't know. I think that's interesting. I'm, it, Anna being back in the meta just totally makes sense to me, given how strong Transcendence is right now. I we talked a little bit about it last week, and I, I'm still shocked that we haven't seen it more. It, it's. Transcendence is one of the best alts right now in the game, particularly in the pro scene, and and uh, and Ana has an ability that just completely counters that. And the fact that it's like a standard ability that doesn't mm -hmm. have a long cooldown, not, not like even an ult. ultimate ability that yeah. counters it, is pretty insane. Yeah, so I would expect it to happen. It's probably still just a matter of not being practiced enough yet, I guess, with Ana or... I don't know the the support players just not being good with her just generally with her shooting ability and things like that. I think it's it's mostly about how teams want to play around her because you can't mm -hmm. just go for a really long extended fight against a team with her because you you have to be very quick with her. Uh, the fact that she can burst heal a lot, yeah, but she mm -hmm. can't AOE heal as easily as like yeah. a Lucio can. Right. Um, so like if you're gonna play with her, you have to be very careful about how you take damage and not taking too much because it'll take a while for you to obviously be healed. Mm -hmm. But it has the potential to work. It just kind of changes the entire way you play. And with now Lucio being out of the meta, it's like, how are teams going to work around that speed? Uh, the thing is, that speed, it corrected a lot of mistakes you would make. Like, if someone gets out of position, speed them out. Like, you know, like, for instance, like a Reaper would go into the back line, right? And they would Wraith Farm away. And then you'd get Lucio to speed him up to actually escape and, like, a Reinhardt shield to protect him. Well, you can't do that anymore. You can't <laughs> depend on a Lucio to True. help you get out of a mistake or an error that you make. So how are teams going to work around that now? Yep, that's a good point. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm sure there'll be a lot of strats that are coming. Hopefully, in the final, you know, the the, the finals of the Overwatch Open that's coming up soon. 
Um, but at the very at the very least, the next big tournament, which I mean, that is the next yeah. one, but maybe the one following that. We'll see. Yeah, I just I want to see I want to see people do like a PTR tournament. I know like I know like That'd the PTR changes are going to be turned live probably, you know, obviously before net the season starts. I think they mentioned that, uh, so it's coming within the next week. But I'm just so eager to see all these changes in action. It's going to be there's so little time like there's so little time between now and and the uh three hundred thousand dollar tournament where people are gonna have to figure out like an entirely new meta like especially the support meta is going to be completely thrown out the window <laughs> and then they're going to be playing for three hundred thousand dollars all of a sudden with brand new stuff that no one's really figured out yet um anyway like i just uh, maybe someone can do a ptr tournament this week that would be cool i'll but cast it, it it doesn't even need maybe. to be ptr it could just be even the first week after it's it's put on live. Yeah, you know, of course. So something something to lead up to it, you know, just to whether it's well, you like got the ghost to tournaments Yeah, the yeah, ghost is, is they're back. back on weekends. Yeah, and then the Alienware yeah. monthly melee for August as well kicks off soon. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll see one of the top teams. Yeah, playing those again, that'd be good. But to your point, Ben, yeah, I, I think it'd be great for teams to try out those strats. You know, just kind of leading up to it versus just <laughs> literally nothing until that moment. And then I don't know what we'll see actually in the tournament. It could be crazy. Um, but uh, moving on to esports news here. Uh, so we did have some news, and uh, particularly with Team Liquid. We'll probably add some other things too that maybe you guys can add. But the big thing that I saw was the Team Liquid signs Rafa, which you know, for those of you that that know anything about FPS or at least uh, like Quake and or, or older FPS games, you're gonna know Rafa. He's like one of the greatest Quake players ever to live, like in duel. Uh, he, he probably is the greatest. I don't know, Ben. What do you think? In, in Quake Live, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, you can't really argue that he was the best, most consistent Quake Live player throughout its lifespan, which was six, seven years now. I mean, he's won. He basically won at least one or, or two big championships every year, which doesn't actually sound like a ton now, but in a game like Quake, there are only one or two championships a year. Yep. At least the last couple of years. Um, so he's a literal legend. Uh, been on the scene since about 2008, uh, but he's an interesting player because he was never known for his aim and mechanical ability. Uh, he's always been known for his brain and his positioning and his the way he approaches the game is just so incredibly smart and difficult to play against. And honestly, like it's hard to draw, it's hard to quantify like positioning for for each different team and. But already, since Rafa has joined the team, I think you can see it in how Team Liquid plays. Mm -hmm. They they've already started just looking like a like they're at least they're trying really interesting stuff with positioning. Um, we got a chance to see that in the Overwatch Open this last week. Uh, so yeah, really really cool to see him on the team. And I think you have a footnote that he's been playing a lot of Genji too. Um, he's kind of flexing between Zarya and Genji mostly. Mm -hmm. um, he'll he's basically just a flex player. He'll he'll play Winston as well. Um, so yeah, just happy to see that. I'm happy to see that he's not playing support. Most, most support <laughs> that would be crazy. Like, seeing him play support. I would. I mean, because it'd be cooler, like all over again, right? I don't want to see that happen. <laughs> um, but it's nice to see that he actually is flexing for the team. Most importantly, you know, able to pay, play a damage dealer role. Uh, I think is is really important and really nice to see. Not to mention, you've got so many ex pros in that team. Yeah, like, that's the, this AZ, is the you, quick you team. Right? So many different games. Well, two yeah. basically two different games. Well, three but actually. Ex -pros. Which what one? was the third? Is CS Mezzer Quake is uh, TF2. TF2. Oh, there you Mezzer, go. Okay. Yeah, right, right. So you got like, CS:GO, three Quake guys, one CS:GO, one TF2, mm -hmm. and then who's the last person? Uh, oh wait, uh, wait, two TF2. Wait, no, I'm, I'm, I, Custa, I'm, I'm Cust, It's okay. Cust, Keep it rolling. Cust is fanatic. <laughs> but, okay. Anyways, uh, but no, yeah. It's cool to see that, and we'll see how they perform because Team Liquid have kind of been underwhelming, I guess, yeah, in since, the past. They're not since, living up to their Team Liquid name, maybe. Ever since Agents Rising, I mean, they had that Agents Rising. They had some momentum and they had some great matches there. We haven't seen much from Team Liquid. Obviously, the rosters changed quite a bit too, but um, yeah, it'd be nice to see just a brand like Liquid doing a little, uh, a bit better in these tournaments. But okay, well. Uh, yeah, good luck to those guys. We'll see how they do whenever the next, you know, the next tournament is, you know, that they can qualify for. Um, but moving on, the Overwatch World Cup rosters were announced, which uh, we talked about last week too. Given that we had we had Huck and Stir on here, and they 
made a team. <laughs> so why don't we bring up these these teams here, and then we'll start talking about it. Um, the big talk before the actual tournament was just that Team Sweden was just going to be stacked. And I think Team Sweden is potentially the most stacked team that we do have. So uh, no surprises here. But um, what do you guys think about Team America? Seagull being the team captain, no surprise here, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, more surprised they only got 50% of the votes, or 57%. That's pretty <laughs> that's ridiculous. Probably true. That's true. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Are you really surprised about that? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I At the risk of, like pissing people off or whatever i love you blizzard you guys are amazing <laughs> i really don't like how much the like the, the size of your youtube channel your twitch following was factored into these uh into these selections in the first place i get that it was everything was based off uh player voting so you 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 can put the onus entirely on the player base but like no and no offense to these players as well like stir is a great guy and he's he hit like high or like low to mid 80s in terms of solo rank uh in ranked play so he's obviously a really good player but he's not a pro like i'm disappointed to see so many national teams filled with uh youtubers and twitch streamers uh if you look at canada it, it's it's kind of worse i mean you, right, you, like i don't even know who this i don't even know who wiz is uh, i could be like just really dumb and not not understanding things or whatever, but he he never really his uh, SR his rank is not super high. But having Poke and Huck on the team, these aren't pro players. Uh, they're not even close to pro players. They're really good, and they might be able to play well with their teams. But like, I just I just wanted this to be uh, like a really about the high level competition, and clearly that's not what Blizzard was going for. Oh. I, I guess I misjudged it because I was like, there's no way that this player is gonna you know this YouTuber is gonna be in. Uh, but anyway, they, they basically all did like get it in <laughs> the, the YouTubers and streamers. But that's just my opinion. Uh, it's gonna be awesome either way. It's gonna be a lot of fun to watch. But I don't know. That's that's my feelings. Just gonna put my two cents out there. Something we mentioned in the office when we were talking about it earlier today is that. Um, wow, I completely forgot. Oh yeah, the naming of the tournament, World Cup. Like if you're a European, that to you is gonna be like the best right. of the best playing against each other. If it was called like mm -hmm. All Star game or the all-star cup then it'd be like all right well then you just have yes. like the all-stars you have you know people know the community and stuff uh the naming as well doesn't really kind of concede to it but i think it's still going to be good nonetheless i think people kind of i think the hate that blizzard are getting for it is kind of undeserved for the fact that they already said this isn't meant to be competitive and the prize they win is going to blizzcon and being and representing their, their region it's not yeah. like they're winning fifty thousand dollars each yeah they get a, like was it three grand and then everything covered for them to go but they did state it. And then you have, uh, as, as Fishix was saying, Team Mexico. Um, yeah. That their team captain is, like, rank 40. Good lord. Something. I didn't even realize that. Like, How does that uh, happen? Something. Okay. Well, I mean, there, uh, just, I mean, you have to remember, there's, there's, there's a lot of countries here, right? And yeah. you have people who have to vote on these people. You have players that have to vote on these people. So yeah, 41, they're... sorry. Yeah. I want to bring that up. 41. 41. I mean, it, it yeah, is what it is. I mean, this is Blizzard's event. Yeah. They can run it however they want. And obviously, this is more for fun and more for exposure than anything. I just think, like, on a strictly, strictly exposure and viewership perspective, if they had truly tried to make this as competitive as possible, it would do better. I'm just going... I, I, I just think so. I don't I think agree. having... Sorry? I said I agree with that. I... Yeah, I, that that's my opinion. I don't want to dwell on it too much, uh, but it, it does suck for teams like Mexico. I think a lot of Latin American teams actually had like one or two YouTubers, like really, really big YouTubers that are just like super low rank, make it onto their team, which it's just, they're just going to get smashed. Like it's not even going to be remotely close. So that's disappointing. Well, particularly them. when you have Sweden, that's complete, like a roster full of pros. Well, <laughs> I mean, I mean that's, screw that's, Sweden so. when it comes to talking about that. Like Talk trendy. about China. Oh, China, China, China yeah. too. and Korea yeah. too. It, it's like if you, I don't know, if you want to, like, there should have been, I think, and personally, yeah. and again, yeah. like, like Ben said, I don't want to dwell on it too much. There should have been like a rule <laughs> that made it so you can't have more than like two or three members of the same team on an actual roster, because yeah. then it would have prevented stuff like this from happening. Yeah, we literally have a, a professional team representing China, which is more along the lines of what Ben was wanting uh, from this. So it is going to be a mixture and. I don't know. Some people will, you know, you know how folks are. Whenever they see some results, they're gonna 
they're going to be saying like the China region is just like crushing or something after this. Um, but I, I agree with you, Ben. I, I wish I, this would have been more of a competitive thing. And I talked about this last week where most everybody on the panel last week disagreed with me and said that this, you know, this should be a fun thing given it's at, at BlizzCon and, you know, they're trying to appeal to the casual um, maybe bridge this whole esport thing to the casual players right now, and maybe just a full out, you know, try hard crazy, you know, event would wouldn't maybe res you know resonate with them as much as something like this, where you have you do have some content makers that they know. Uh, but in the end, yeah, I, I think that it's just going to be a bunch of stomps. I mean, may maybe the you know maybe a couple teams in the end, you know, end up having a pretty decent matches, but. Yeah, that Chinese team, if it's it's just a full team, they should win. I mean, I, I don't think there's any... Yeah, no, I don't know about that, man. Uh, like, really? We actually know this team. They are called. They used to be called Veteran. They played in a couple tournaments uh, a couple months ago, the Chinese team. Yeah. And they just didn't even look close on the same level yet. What? No. They Sorry. put in the Onog Invitational Tournament that you held. Yeah. And we casted them versus Team Liquid, and they actually almost beat Team Liquid in Hollywood. Okay, they, yeah. But they were playing with like 200 ping as well. That's right. a while I, back. That it was, was like actually months close. Ago. Yeah, yeah, I think they're. I think so. What I will say ago. is, I think both Korea and China could make a surprise appearance in like the top five or top three, even uh, maybe. But there's no chance that they win against some of these some of these top teams. I mean, if you look at Sweden, they're fantastic. They're looking great. But also Finland, man. Finland, yeah, yeah Finland is looks looking so strong. And I have a I have a surprise pick that probably not a lot of people on Reddit are talking about. Uh, I think Team Russia. Could be top three. Team Russia? Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. You've got Cypher. You've got Rubicon. Oh, Who unfixed. played very, very well yeah. as uh, as Zenyatta. You've got Unfixed. you got Shadowburn, who's arguably one of the best Genjis in the game right now. you got... I don't even know who this guy Reds is, but he's ranked He's a captain's pick, like, too. So it's, I, th it's I, think, good. I think Russia could actually be top three in this tournament. And also the other CIS team. Yeah, the CIS, CIS team was Baltic. my pick. Yeah, that was my. Yeah, pick like they're too. they're gonna be really they're gonna be really freaking good. Yeah. The team I'm most disappointed for in this whole thing <laughs> is, is there's no question about it. It's France. France. Yeah. What happened to France? <laughs> there's like so many pro players in France. So look, this is the pro This is oh, the problem. Alphagans. They did the votes <laughs> the week before the ESL Atlantic showdown. Oh, so I see. I see. People didn't know AKM and wins yet. Oh my gosh, there's like two of the best players right now, and <laughs> they didn't make this roster. That's just nuts. I mean, AKM wins. Unco could be in there. Like, they could just take half of Rogue and have a really good team. Mm -hmm. None of them are in except for Nox right like, now. D Gun Crew, AKM wins Unco, and like that could win the tournament. Anyone from Melty, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you have a damn good team. Yeah. Uh, someone in chat it. is saying Spain. Like, I think Spain's going to be pretty good, uh, too. Let me see Spain's. I didn't... I, I didn't... It's like Wing Haven. I don't know about two of these guys. Wing Haven, Harry Hook. Yeah, wait. Bromas. Yeah, Harry Hook. Yeah, Harry Hook. Yeah, Harry. Okay. <laughs> the two captains picks, of course. Who's line pro? Do you guys... Uh, He's played for a couple of, hmm. like, mm, teams. I, I, I know the name, like, for a fact. I know I've cast him before, but yeah. nothing, like, super that you've known... Or have been able to know. Let me link the let me link this in the chat too. By the way, you guys can check out all the the different teams. Um, but it'll it'll be fun regardless. I mean, just having something Overwatch related at BlizzCon will be great. But in the future, well, the we should date. definitely do a, a a real version of this World Cup. It should have been called All Star. Jason is right and on point. That this thing should have been called All Stars, not not World Cup. But whenever we do have the next iteration of this, it it should be players you know like top players representing their countries anyway yeah i just hope we have people there that know the players from these regions like say we have someone from argentina qualify mm -hmm. like do we have anyone that knows who they are <laughs> like as actual players kind of thing it'd be nice to actually have someone who knew like the background of them kind of uh, a little bit yeah yeah it's a lot of countries what? do you think they should have had as many countries as as they do have I think it's cool. I mean, it's going to help each individual scene grow, mm -hmm. but it would help each individual scene grow a lot more if there was like qualifiers and tryouts right, exactly. and like a whole storyline about that. But of course, there's very little time here. And, you know, we got to give Blizzard credit for pulling out this out as quickly as they did. I yeah. think next year is probably going to be really, really, really sick if they if they have a couple of months of like qualifiers and time to build some storylines. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, hopefully uh, we'll have some, at least we'll have a, a setup at BlizzCon that'll be, you know, at least feel like esports to some degree. So people there can experience what Overwatch esports is like to a degree, at least to some degree. Um, I just put uh, put my predictions for top 10 in the chat, by the way. Oh, did you? Okay. You guys want give, give your predictions. Let us know who you think. That's true. Germany we didn't talk strong. about. No, Germany for sure is one of the top teams. Was it sure. Skipjack? Yeah. I don't know. Whole... Yeah. I, I haven't seen Bricks play. Like, he hasn't played on a top team since, like, early, early closed days. beta, it seems like. So, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how good he still is these days. Um, I don't really know what Sura, but yeah, it's going to be a good team. For sure. It'll be fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm, the thing is, with, with Blizzard being the ones that are doing this whole thing, I want to see how, like, the production's going to be and, like, what yeah. they can actually bring to the table when it comes to putting on a good show because i think it's going to be pretty damn epic yeah yeah I mean, it's gonna be awesome i mean I, I legit think that first of all i think that there's going to be like five or six really really good teams if you look at it maybe six actually i think like the top the top eight are all going to be like super good and then there's going to be the question of like does korea or china show up and if they do i think that's going to be really really hype uh i'm worried about the north american teams i really am uh, i'm not sure either of them are going to make top five uh but like i think it's just cool well, to see. Like, I think U.S. Europe has, has a lot of talent. Asia is going to be interesting to watch. I think you. I mean, U.S. seems is looking a little bit better than Canada. I believe eh, I it could agree. be close. I <laughs> mean, we'll have to see. The funny part is Canada could have been so freaking good. Yep. Uh, but like, I, no offense, I just don't know who Wiz is, and having Poke and Huck on the team. Just I don't know. Neither of them play for like a pro team. I, I don't know. It was a captain's pick too. <laughs> Huck was a captain. Yeah, that's the pick. interesting thing about it. Yeah, uh, that's the really interesting thing about it. That I don't know. Well, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll, see, we'll definitely see how it goes. So there, there's going to have to be some. I mean, they're not going to show every one of these matches at BlizzCon, right? I mean, there's going to have to be some. No way. Only, some preliminary. How many rounds. teams qualify for BlizzCon? I'm not sure. Actually, it's like a certain number from each region do. Okay, maybe two or three. I don't think it's set. Think it doesn't says on. It doesn't say on this page at least. Um, that would make sense, I guess, if there were there was a. I don't know. Maybe two teams qualify from each region, and then there was like six from North America or something. I, I can try oh to find God, it, but six. That's a lot. And wow. and by the way, I just want to just take note. Uh, in the blurb, it says they tabulated over three million votes, mm -hmm. and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you can only vote if you were logged in and own the game. So that means that like. Basically, like twenty percent of all Overwatch players voted on this. Yeah, that's, that's impressive. Pretty fucking cool, man. It was three million. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> um, I do have it, by the way. So six teams from Europe, six from Asia Pacific regions, four from the Americas. So sixteen teams played at BlizzCon. Nice. Why, why only four from Americas? Jeez, that's weird. Well, because because in the Americas there's the United States, Canada, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Mexico, Peru. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But Europe has like twenty, like different countries. So right, it makes right. sense, right? So what is that? Sixteen teams then? Okay, sixteen yeah. teams. I guess what single them? Probably. Um, Who knows? Yeah. No, no. I think they have their whole like like they have a whole qualifier thing like already the idea ready to go. They're just trying to look at impl looking at implementing it or something. I'm not sure. I don't think they have the rules set out yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, pretty exciting. I mean, any anything that you know has to do with representing your country is always going to be a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, I can't I can't wait to s get a chance to see all these players too at at the BlizzCon. It's going to be great. Are you um, going to BlizzCon? Yeah, I'll be at there. I'll definitely. So, be there. so are we going to have the overview at BlizzCon live from BlizzCon? Uh, I was thinking about doing something. Yeah, so something might be in the works. We'll 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 try to figure something out. Yeah, that means yes. <laughs> no, that that's not a definite yeah. This is a typical Jason Capital. I'll have that a live a audience. Might yes. be lock <laughs> a live audience, right? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, anyways, yeah, this kind of will be fun. So uh, why don't we move on to uh, talk about the big event that happened this week, which was the Overwatch Open, which Ben has the pleasure of casting and analyzing and just being on the panel and just lots of fun there uh so overall like what how was it i guess just in terms of you know production the studio and, and everything over at face it well first of all the hours were kind of ridiculous uh we were getting to the studio each day at about 3 p.m or like 2 p.m on some days yeah and not leaving until 3 a.m or sometimes 5 a.m 
So it was basically like 12 to 15 hour days, like almost every day. Uh, and I was dumb enough to be staying in central London. So I had to drive 45 oh, minutes to an hour also on each side. So like <laughs> yeah. personally, like it left literally no free time at all, which is fine. I'm not complaining. It was a ton of fun. Um, really enjoyed hanging out with all the casters. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're in, when you're locked in a small studio together for five days straight, you can either end up hating each other or, <laughs> or becoming really close. And I think it was the latter. It's like the uh, real world caster edition. Yeah, seriously. So who was it? Get it, was, it was Rage, it was uh, ZP, and Joshi, James, uh, uh, Jorasar, uh, DDK, and myself. Yeah. Cool. And yeah, that, fun, that was it. Fun group. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun group, and you know, we had our memes and our. Uh, we had a, we, there was like a three hour break between NA and EU each day, so yes. we, we, we we would just go to this one restaurant like every single day and just chill there for like two hours. It was fun. Um, and the production, I think the studio was fantastic. Like that studio mm -hmm. looks incredible. Mm -hmm. It's in the IMG, uh, building, which is, uh, a huge sports and talent agency and production house. And they were actually producing premier league soccer or football if you're European right next to us. So like the premier league studio is right there. Um, the studio looked great, sounded great. The, the, all the equipment's good. Um, I think the observing got better throughout the course of it. Uh, those They have a pretty interesting setup where they have two observers, but each of those observers have two computers. So they would try to set up like, each of them would have one cinematic angle that they would set up for each point and then would be controlling one person so then the producer could swap between those four. Right. Um, right. Which ended up being pretty okay. I think still some progress could be made there. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. I think we hit like a... Got like twenty five thousand viewers yeah. for the NRG match, which which was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely numbers. I think we're fine. Um, you know, making it NA friendly, I think, was pretty important <laughs> to to getting some good numbers, particularly when you have energy playing. Um, but yeah, let's, let's talk about some of the results. Some uh, there were some surprising results. You know, I, I listed a few here in our notes with Anox beating Misfits, uh, Phase beating Rogue, or Phase Clan beating Rogue, LG beating Dignitas, and the big one Rise Nation beating Complexity, and you know, being part of knocking out Complexity completely from from making it to Atlanta. What were the big ones for you, Ben? Um, pretty much every, uh, pretty much every group played out how we expected except for na group d yeah. oh which was totally Crazy. nuts yeah. uh complexity losing to rise nation was like one of the biggest upsets uh you could possibly imagine i mean this rise nation team had uh i think as uh as zp was saying in the cast literally their only notable result result prior to this tournament was taking one map off sody pop which is like a mid-tier NA team. This is the only thing they'd ever done before this. And then they end up pretty much smashing complexity. Like it wasn't even it wasn't close. close. It was, it was um, easy. And they played well for the, for the rest of their games. They gave uh, Method a run for their money um, against NRG. It wasn't that close, no, but on Dorado, they made it pretty close in the end. Um, so this team, you got to give it up to Rise, uh, which is like a primarily Call of Duty team, as far as I know, for picking them up. Because they picked them up the day before this, and I was like, mm, "This is a weird pickup. This team has no results." But suddenly they just like did really well, um, and now I'm hearing that when they're scrimming with everyone else, like they're playing super well and just getting better and better. Mm. Um, awesome to see that. It's rare that you see a big upset like that. Um, other things that happened: Colorado Clutch ended up losing, and apparently they've dropped Hamsword, um, so they're having a little bit of internal stuff go on. Mm. Uh, let's see what else. What else? Uh, Splice, I think one of the one of the closest series we saw the whole weekend was Splice for Selfless. Um, I I personally thought Selfless had the edge, uh, and it was really unfortunate for Selfless because they beat Splice the first time they played. Mm -hmm. They're in a group with Envious, right? Neither of them is going to beat Envious. Uh, so Selfless beats Splice, plays Envious, loses. Splice <laughs> uh, had a buy because the fourth team dropped out. And then they played Selfless again. They win the second time. And then Splice goes through the group and Selfless doesn't. Pretty rough. That should have been like a best of three of best of threes. <laughs> right. For them to have a chance. <laughs> yeah, something uh, like that. The thing is, you also have to keep in mind, right, is that a lot of these teams who didn't qualify, like, have struggled to qualify for not only this tournament, but the Atlantic Showdown. 
So I, I'm assuming we're going to definitely be seeing some restructuring of these teams in EU and in it. Um, you know, you look at Melt. What was the last time they qualified for anything? Yeah. Yeah. Pose beta? Uh, they did something after. Ish. Right? I mean, there's, I, I consider something. from now till then, there's got to be a lot of restructuring. And even with the, uh, the Asian tournament coming up, the Asian Pacific tournament, there's like six teams from NA and like six from Japan and like four or whatever from China. So there's no European teams at all going to that, according to the press release. So then you have to wonder, is Europe going to go through like a big change of players? And why not? Because this is the perfect time to do it. You have nothing major coming up until after BlizzCon. Yeah. Um, I thought OW Kings played really well. Uh, especially Olba really, really impressed me. Yeah. So I'd like to see McCree, them right? finalize a slightly better roster. What's up? McCree, right? Yeah, his yeah, McCree, his McCree is great. sick. He has a really sick McCree. Um, in terms of other... I guess I said that there weren't any big upsets in terms of the groups themselves, uh, in terms of who went through the groups. But there were some big upsets in terms of matches, especially right. in EU. Mm -hmm. um, Anox beat Misfits. So this is the, the team with Cooler and Cypher, some other Quake legends. So that was a huge surprise and disappointing result, frankly, for Misfits. But another one that I hope a lot of you guys got a chance to watch was FaZe Clan yep. beat Rogue. So the team Rogue. that just won the ESL yeah. Atlantic Showdown lost to FaZe, who prior to this wasn't even necessarily a shoe in for top four in, in EU. I'd say now they've kind of like dethroned Dignitas as top four in EU. Mm -hmm. But uh, they beat Rogue. That was pretty sick. Yeah, I mean, I, and I, I remember seeing, I think it was Reinforce tweet that he was afraid of this. I mean, he, he thought this uh, team would actually give them a lot of problems. And, in, you know, in the end, they did end up getting them a lot of problems. So FaZe Clan, I think, has been on a lot of the European teams, you know, they, mind, they, they, they've been doing pretty well for a while now. So uh, I think it, maybe yeah. now is where they kind of maybe take the next step, which would be really great for them. And, again, another great team from Europe. I mean, <laughs> Europe's looking pretty good right now. Holy crap. It was also scary for Group D, I think, for Team Dinitas in particular. The fact that they dropped out as the first team in the Overwatch Atlantic Showdown, and then they almost lost um, so close. in they the group. So close to dropping out. Yeah, yeah, like that. I mean, considering they just got picked up by Dinitas, that, that would internally, I know, make them really unhappy. Uh, and who knows what OD would kind of take from that one, <laughs> the uh, the owner of Dinitas. But, yeah. I mean, luckily for them, they went through. But And then they move into, and I'm not sure if this has been changed, because there recently was uh changes which i think we're yeah, they pretty much trying to get tra format. segue into is changing the format of mm -hmm. how the yep. tournament works where it's now best of three instead of best of one but it's still europe plays europe and na plays na and then the best team from each region plays in the e-league studios right. so it's kind of like the regions don't clash until the grand final yeah that yeah. was a yeah. pretty interesting decision uh i don't love it but it makes sense i mean if you think about it they're all gearing up to this one broadcast, which is going to be on TBS on national television in the U.S., watched by potentially half a million to a million people who probably haven't watched Overwatch before. Uh, it makes sense that they're trying to build up this EU version storyline. Story line, yeah, right? I mean, something to talk about. But uh, from a, like from a fan perspective, they're going to be all in a physical location in Atlanta together. And they're not gonna play NA versus EU. Like, I don't know. I'm. I, I would rather see it be just all teams thrown into the same bracket. But I get it. Can't really fault them. It's their tournament. Either all in the same bracket, or just what you guys did at Atlantic Showdown. Just have the first round actually be NA versus EU, just across the board, and then just kind of see how it plays out. Well, I think yeah. It's also the fact that's only one match that's gonna be shown on TV. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah, you need to have an EU and an NA team there. I, I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. I think it basically says, though, for Envy, it's like, all right, free pass into the Grand Finals, right? Because, like, all the European teams, it's what we saw the last tournament, was able to actually put them through a struggle. Yeah, could end up being good for viewership. Uh, but also, if it's only one match, it's not going to give, like, a lot of building time during that one broadcast. And we yeah. all know how Twitch works. Like, you build over time. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It's going to be fun. I'm just sad that I won't be able to make it there because I'll be at TwitchCon. I will too. Actually, I'll be at TwitchCon too. I'll have to be watching it from from there. It would have been nice to see semis, actually, semis and um, and the finals on televised or on television. But uh, well, maybe next time. It's also nice to see that they were able to change the format, like to yeah, respond what the players true. wanted. Like that's not always the case that 
organizations are able to do that or willing to do that, but it's good to see that they were able to. Uh, and Minsik, the the GM, I actually know him from a long time ago, back when he worked with Ocelot, like with SK. Uh, and he's always willing to listen to to the community and listen to people. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, apparently, these format changes were originated from a, a letter that was sent from Morte. So, uh, at least on behalf of like all the teams. I mean, I'm not sure. If it was like collective all teams, hey Morte, send this letter for us or anything like that. Yeah, but it was it was, it was like in the that. pro Discord. They're like asking okay. about it, like can we change it and like yeah. where it's like yeah, I'll send an email if all teams agree and everyone agrees. Okay, okay, cool. So yeah, definitely good of him to to take that feedback and obviously make some changes for the better. And I mean, we saw that with the Atlantic Showdown too. I mean, the, you guys in Blizzard made a big change just see pretty early on in the uh, just the qualifying stages or that. You know the viewers and the players were not happy with how the format was, and so you guys changed it. So it's good. It's good to see that people are willing and not too prideful about changing it. At least even mid tournament, that's actually good. Okay. Uh, anything else you got? You want to add, Ben? Just to Overwatch Open? Anything? No, man. Nope. Right. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I was in Europe for three oh, weeks. Straight. Actually, any, any cool stress you saw? I mean, I, I definitely saw the uh, the one thing that's probably worth talking about was the energy triples. Triple tank, triple support on some of those control point maps? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, that, that's kind of like the NIP strategy, and they yeah. pulled it out consistently in this tournament. They played it on, like, every payload map. But I did like seeing NRG play it on control. That's that's fairly unique, mm -hmm. uh, something that we haven't seen many other teams doing. And everyone in chat's going to be like, oh, freaking Seagull fanboys. But I do have to give it to NRG. They always seem to have something unique up their sleeve. Um, it wasn't just the strategy. They also just had like some kind of interesting ways of approaching Dorado with Seagull going on the yeah. longest flank route I've oh, like, gosh, ever watched, I've crazy. ever seen before. That was crazy. Like, he spent like 30, 40 seconds flank, like getting this flank set up, uh, which was pretty cool. So NRG, their boot camp seems to be paying off. Mm -hmm. They played God tier well, like, and I really mean it. They played so well on control maps. Um, just there was just great synergy, especially between Gods and Seagull. Really, just gods playing winston at a very high level seagull taking full advantage of that um milo played like the best game i've seen him play ever with just hitting ridiculous graviton surges constantly um mm -hmm. which was pretty cool to see um but yeah i mean i think in terms of meta and i was trying to talk i was talking to jason a bit about this at the esl Atlantic showdown and I've been talking to zp about this a bit as well it just seems to me that uh this new kind of offensive strategy of these dive compositions built all around Genji and Tracer going with a Winston to dive the back lines like immediately like this became so freaking common over the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. so many teams are playing this on so many different payload maps just uh so I think that's I don't know a talking point I guess I don't know yeah that's... there's like there's like two there's two base iterations with some minor tweaks where it's like the Genji Tracer and that's the McCree Reaper, mm -hmm. depending on like where you are on a map and what you're going up against. And the iterations between those is like a Tracer McCree or like a Genji Reaper or something like that. And then on the other side, it's like, or I mean, that kind of works out exactly what I was trying to say. There's just small iterations in between, depending on, I guess, what you're comfortable with, what your hero pool is, and where you are on the map. Um, I want to see more damage characters involved. Uh, maybe even defense. The thing is, defense doesn't really work with the way teams are playing this. But like, maybe some more offensive heroes being released. Maybe Sombra would be a damage dealer um, because it can completely change like how you actually how the meta works. Like on on the AMA I did earlier today, someone asked me like, "What's five changes or things you would add or take away from the game?" And I said like, "For all five, new heroes, new heroes, new heroes," because yeah. mm -hmm. you need new heroes in the game to like give unique traits to teams like oh this team really loves playing this hero or this team likes playing this hero but hero a favors this part of the map and here and hero b favors another part of the map uh it's just something that will kind of happen in time yeah i mean it's been I a while since, Sarah back, man. it's been a while <laughs> since we've seen trip deeps you know like we we're just talking about trip tanks here and trip support and we you know it, it, we've talked about all kinds of different combos with tanks and there's the no third yeah. There's no third DPS that exactly. synchronizes well with the other two. Exactly. Like Soldier, I guess, with McCree Reaper, but there's no quick dashing around hero like Genji and Tracer. Mm -hmm. well, but I'm with Ben. We Farrah. saw him a couple times. Yeah, I, I want to see with... some Farah. 
some fair. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll see some fair, especially with the new map. I think if the if people start playing uh, Eichenwald, that uh, Pharaoh will be back in the the mix there with Mercy. That would be cool to see. Just flying around. I, mean, I, I talked nice to fun. pros uh, at the ESL Atlantic Showdown. I talked to a couple pros in person. After, this was this was like two days after the PTR notes were released, who were saying the Discord nerf alone should be enough to bring Pharaoh back. Um, but also wow. with the Mercy buffs, like I think Pharaoh will definitely be viable in, in a lot of situations again. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that'd be good. It's fun to watch Pharaoh too, like as a spectator. So uh, I think it'll, it'll it'll be good overall. I think from just from events and production stuff too. It's also like a complete change to how like the game works because you have a fight on the ground, but you also have a fight in the sky. <laughs> right. It's like it's like it's like Battlefield where there's like the ground war, there's infantry war, and then you have like the the dog fights in the air. And I always love seeing the Fair Mercy re Fair Mercy combos because, like, back when it was Seagull versus Tailspin, you know, with uh, Nod Enigma <laughs> versus Team Hubris, those yeah. were always the most epic battles. And yep. teams would typically win when you can win that air battle. And it was always so cool to have. Yeah. In the air battle, it's just very clear just how much skill is involved there. Just because we've all, we've all been up there and just, like, you know, whiffed with a lot of our rockets. So whenever pros, you know, pull out plays like that, it's, it's definitely awesome from the spectator standpoint. Um, all right, well, why don't we move on? So when you guys added the Alienware Monthly Melee, I think we mentioned that. So those are back, uh, apparently. They, were they gone? I, mean, I think they've, they've, they've been doing no, it. No, it's only once a month. month. Yeah, so, they've been doing yeah. it like the last two months too. So uh, I think that one's coming up here. I just added it because it actually starts in 10 minutes. Oh, it starts in 10 minutes. Okay. So we should. I just yeah. want to like we'll tell people that. about it. Yeah, we'll definitely um, host Group that. A is phase, method, complexity, and clutch. Ooh, and yeah. uh, this should be interesting. Will complexity crumble again, or will they actually have a decent result? Faye is clearly the favorite in that group. Uh, group B is Cloud9, Sody Pop, Selfless, and Rise. And I saw some mm. people saying, oh, this group is so boring. No. It's just going to be Sody Pop and Cloud9. I'm like, no, actually, no. I think Selfless, Rise, and Sody Pop all have a chance um, with Cloud9 being the clear favorite. And it's for $5,000, so, you know, it's, it's decent. This is full of a bunch of teams that are on the rise right now. So, uh, you know, maybe hopefully more overwatch you know spectators will, will get a chance to get to know these teams because like we were just talking about in the overwatch open some of these teams had some huge wins and some of them are moving on too so um you know get get used to some of these names because you're going to be seeing them in the in the near, seeing them more in the near future okay well why don't we take a couple questions before we take uh call it a day uh if you guys have any questions uh go ahead and tweet them to me uh at champion or you can write some in the twitch chat and Ben, keep an eye, or ben and Jason, keep an eye on Twitch chat. See if you see anything good there. Yeah, I, I would just say, like, as a, as a closing note for me before we jump into the questions, it was, it was just hella fun getting together with everybody, casting with Jason, casting with all the ESL guys oh, at that, Gamescom. Yeah. Yeah. Getting to meet all the players was really, really cool, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like, on, on Sunday after the tournament ended, we all, like all the players and casters and everyone was getting together and it was really cool to see like every, players from every different team were just hanging out with each other, like chatting it up. Um, that, that whole environment was just cool to see for the first time. Yeah. Where did y'all go to a the, bar the, or something? Where did y'all do? Like... No, Blizzard held like a, a get together with like the talent and the players oh, um, nice. after, after the finals. So you got to just chill, have some drinks, food and... And like Ben said, just meet the players, talk to them a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Like thing is, I and you from Europe, like I know most of the European players already from the Takeover tournament, but the NA guys, like, I had no clue where they were. So I finally got to meet you know Cloud Nine a little bit, Envious. Mm -hmm. They did a toss with there, looking all mopey because they already because they were knocked out right away. <laughs> um, it was good times though. It was really good times. Even like yeah, I got to, getting to speak to Hard Blue. That guy, man, he's like he's awesome. He's he's probably like one of the best people we had being interviewed on the stage. This guy is just like always so happy go lucky. Like, even though they lost, I talked to him. And he's like, "Yeah, I had such a great time being here. It was great to meet everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, it was great to just play." That guy just doesn't get, ever get sad. Yeah, uh, and we saw that from like a lot of the teams that had poor poor performances than expected. They were still all all smiles, laughing, joking. You know, weren't too salty, which was good to see. I was worried that the salt levels would be nine thousand, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, we got the question, what do you think about Complexity's performance in OW Open? Uh, my honest assessment is that these guys have a problem with nerves um, because, really? wow. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's what it was at, at ESL, I think. And like, 
Cork is an amazing hit scan player, but you can see sometimes like he just looks you can his aim looks visibly nervous at times. Um, like there was a moment when they were when they were losing to Rise where Torque was in a position where he like could have carried his team if he if his aim was just on like it has been in the past. But he like was he was doing 180s like freaking out looking for everybody like as quickly as he could. And it just uh, I, I think wow. that honestly this team has just a problem with with nerves. Once they get over that, they're going to do much better. Yeah, but something before... Tifa said their their manager at at, over, or at Gamescom is that they get down on themselves really bad too. Like if they start to lose, they just can't stop themselves from getting even further into the pit. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely surprising them being knocked out by by Rise Nation, yeah. and especially the way they got knocked out too. That was that was the most shocking part for me. That it wasn't even it wasn't even tough at all for Rise Nation. And then we saw Rise Nation end up playing NRG, and it was like the complete opposite, right? So, um, yeah, that's a that's a pretty big difference from the team that was the second best team in, in NA for. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that they were second best team. Maybe like six weeks ago, something like that. I like the the question. Get off me, bug. Um, what the hell is up with Cloud Diver's complexity? Does Harbu have sure for his mother in his basement? <laughs> what? Uh, um, what? So I don't think that's the case. Um, but something I did mention during the actual cast when we did that was that complexity is the second hardest team for Cloud9 to beat. You have Envious who, like, they beat 18% of the time. You have um, Energy, they beat 80% of the time. You have Team Liquid, they beat 89% of the time. But complexity, they beat like 50, some, like low 50% of the time. Mm -hmm. And out of like the top North American teams, this is the team that makes them struggle the most. Uh, and they probably played against, against each other so much in the past, scrimming and whatnot, that complexity just know how to play against Cloud9 in particular. Yeah. Yeah. It's been that way for a long time. I, I still remember Code 7 upsetting Cloud9 and us <laughs> just being like, what the hell is going on? Is Code 7 the best team in the world? Like, what is this? Right. Um, yeah. And they've gone up and down. So. All right, how about one more question that's not Jason related about maybe. to Jeff? <laughs> that's not that question. Uh, let's see if we got any on Twitter here. You guys could jump to the front of the line if you guys tweeted it, but I guess nobody's going to be tweeting today. All right, well, I'll give you a few more seconds. If there's no more questions, then we'll just call it. Come on, chat. I believe in you. Yeah, come on. There's got to be some kind of question <laughs> here. Maybe they wasted all their questions already on Jason's AMA. They got nothing left. You, didn't you know how hard it is to type with nine fingers? You didn't answer all those things. Oh, that's true. I did. You... Yeah, yeah, I did actually do it. It's really hard to it. type with nine fingers. Yeah? Okay. Here's one. Do you think that Lucio will really be knocked out of the meta from Silver Light 100 in chat? Uh, my ugh, God, it's just I feel dumb making predictions without even playing, but I don't think so. His passive healing is still good. Speed boost is always going to be really valuable. I just think, you know, when you say knocked out, he's been picked in every composition for Forever. every game on every game <laughs> type for since the game came out. So yeah, maybe it's justifiable that he needs to be knocked down a little bit. Um, I think he's still going to be picked, though. I think there's too many good reasons to have him especially for speed boosting. Yeah, I think what's nice about him is you can do certain comps with him too. Mm -hmm. And like him and Anna together are actually still really strong. If you biotic grenade your team and he's using his amp healing, he heals for 160 health per second, which is mm -hmm. the, basically the old transcendence, which was 200 health per second. Yeah. Um, so you can do a lot of healing for that one too. And also speed and the nano boost to target. And also gives light to like other compositions too. Like you can run uh, Mercy's and Yada. You discord someone and Mercy's damage and someone, you can destroy the target no matter who it is. I think it just, it finally gives way to, to new comps, uh, you know, being played now. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to see what these games would would, would look like too without speed boost. Because, I mean, even, even just how the maps would play out. There are a lot of, points in the maps that i think speed boost is such a huge factor uh especially on i don't know maps like uh um like numbani and things like that where it's just there's these large gaps that, that that teams just cover instantly with with the ability from from lucio be nice to see if they had to trudge their way through those areas versus just like it power through the it. engage mechanic yeah, of teams totally, totally. almost every single team speed amps into a fight mm -hmm. to make a fight happen yeah. And if you can't do that anymore, what do you do? Maybe use Maywall to separate teams. 
Exactly. No. That would be cool. Please no. <laughs> Why? Why is Rosalind I hate May. Oh, she just, I love May. On, She's so tight. You know what I, you know what I did hater. today? There was a Zarya on the enemy team. I froze her. I missed my right click because I get nine fingers. So don't blame me. And then I froze her again and killed her. Like, the fact that you can freeze people consistently, like, in a row, it pisses me off. But it needs to be, like, an internal cooldown. Like, you can't freeze this person for another eight seconds or something. Because you can 1v1 basically anyone with her. You can just freeze them over and over and over again. If you're in a 1v1, yeah. But you should, uh, you should adjust <laughs> your strategy, Jason. <laughs> Not would, that's what people Wait, can put out the McCree with the, like, right-clicking. Oh, you had to explain the nine fingers. People don't understand what you're talking about. I... I cut my finger really bad. Uh, you can't really tell uh, with a knife, and I'm not supposed to bend it or get uh, it wet. There was blood everywhere for like 45 minutes. Damn. Um, okay. Yeah, what about the McCree <laughs> thing? Like everyone was complaining, it's too strong, and the you know flash and right click kill you no matter who you were. It's like isn't the whole like just get but get good, right? Yeah, uh, you can't here. say that with me. That's not fair. Well, I, I do wish that there was some way of debuffing the the freeze. You know, like. I don't know, just some some way of countering that. But she's not strong that she's not super strong without you know, with she's obviously being played in some situations right now, but she she isn't strong by herself at all, so they have to do something. They gotta give her something super powerful, right? Well I, actually this is just gonna kinda segue into this last question as we okay. wrap up the show. Sure. Uh, uh it's gonna be EU Raider asking in chat, what's your opinion on the community outrage on defensive hero pick rates? So we saw more Junkrat, more Mei, and more Hanzo than ever before in these last couple tournaments. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of that is likely alleviated, I guess. I don't know. What do you think? Do, or do you hate all these characters? <laughs> I don't hate them all. I hate a lot of them. Um, it's just it's a completely different play style, I think, with defense versus offense. Like when you're playing offense, you take the fight to the enemy team. Like they, you don't let them come to you like you do on mm -hmm. defense. If you're a junk rat, you don't go run into enemy team and fight them. You wait for them to come towards you and you spam them down, right? The problem with the way the game play a game is played at the moment is it's all about making the fight happen on your terms, so being aggressive and fighting. So it always tends to go towards offensive heroes' ways. With the looser speed changes, maybe we'll see more defensive heroes come mm -hmm. into play. I would assume a lot more junk rat since mm -hmm. he can't be rushed down anymore. May as well could be decently good at splitting up a team if you put a wall up in between them. Um, Hanzo with the changes. Probably will be played a little bit more as well. Um, even even Bastion to a certain level, you could see quite a bit more, though it'd be a little bit harder to kind of make him fit. I loved watching Junkrat, especially on on Anubis defense. Um, just totally <laughs> stomping, like people trying to push forward straight forward as quickly as they possibly can. Like Junkrat was just dominating a lot of those situations. Bombs, yeah. And that was with speed boost too. Yeah. So imagine yeah, it without a speed boost, right? Like you can't. Yeah, I mean, so many fights right now are just, they're, they're only team fights right now. That's what's kind of interesting about, you know, I think a lot of people have been making this assessment. It's just, you know, everything in Overwatch right now is team team on team battles. And you know, depending on how much progress you make or, or whether you win or not, all, like all depends on, on who are, who's landing the, the Zarya ult and the, the combos, whatever combo off of the Zarya ult type of thing. So like the thing, cool thing about Junkrat is that he can he can actually break that up to a bit to a degree without actually using an ult. I mean his ult can actually do a, like a damage to that entire ball too. But um, I do like the fact that yeah you can you can do a lot of not only spamming but actually just positional um, disarray you know with some of his abilities too. I think yeah. Junkrat is like more useless. It is probably the most useless hero ulting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's it's safe to say. You do slime. more utility and damage, well, maybe not damage. You do more utility that, in turn, allows your team to do more damage if you don't use your ult. Yeah, agreed. Is it the worst ult right now? It could be the worst. Um, ult right Um, maybe, probably. Yeah. 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 It's not good. It's really not good. Yeah, it's I mean, so it's... easy to kill that tire now. <laughs> it's all or nothing, you know, with that thing. And a lot I mean, of times, they, it's they, nothing. Did they nerf the tire? Didn't they nerf the tire HP from 150 was... to 50? No, 100. No, no, it's 100. Oh, it's 100. It's 100. Yeah. But yeah. it's you hear it coming, and the only way you can really get it off is in, like, extreme chaos or something like that. But even that is, you're not using your displacement of your steel trap in your remote mine. Like, yeah. I don't know. It, you didn't really see teams actually use ult that often, I think, when we saw it. It was just kind of like when the fight was dying down to pick up a couple of kills mm -hmm. uh, as they are running away or something. I wonder if the audio should be... Uh, buffed like just don't make it so loud and weekly brawl yeah. no audio on ultimates 
That would be sick. No voice lines on <laughs> ultimates. Dude, That'd be the that hardest be thing oh ever. Oh my god, I'm a Kree Kree Dead Eye out of nowhere. <laughs> Even Soldier You're just dead. Good. You're just yeah. no chance. A barrage. I mean, you can see, I guess, so it's not yeah, really barrage, big of a deal. Yeah, the barrage isn't as big a deal. But but maybe so Soldier's old, McCree's old, Junk's old. What else? Genji. Even Genji's old's Genji? pretty damn powerful yeah, like that. Yeah. But just that seeing six Junk cool. Red ultimates coming at you out of like, nowhere without any notice would be. <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh definitely we definitely saw our share of whiffed ults uh even during the overwatch open there was that one ult that, that we even get, they they got a reinhardt kill at the spawn <laughs> i forget which game that was uh where the, it was uh, on dorado, yeah right? that was yeah. that was nrg yeah yeah, yeah, yeah on yeah. dorado that was, that was pretty funny too it was like the longest most telegraph ult of all time <laughs> like there's a zero percent chance whip. this kills anyone haha <laughs> 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 what a oh fuck it could just kill the zenyatta what is this <laughs> i know right all right, well, why don't we wrap up the show, and at least for this week, you guys want to do some shout-outs? Jason, where can people find you outside of the ESL studio? Um, you can probably see my nose from space if you want to look there. <laughs> um, you find me on Twitter, at Jay Kaplan. You, you saw it on the bottom part earlier on. Um, even on Twitch, at Jason Kaplan. I guess that works. I stream from time to time whenever I can, though I'm terrible. <laughs> Um and uh Golden Boys Golden in Boys chat. asking for a Golden out. Boys in chat gonna give him a shout out oh, to man. to finally meet him at Gamescom and see him avoid taking a shot of a certain drink because he was too afraid. Oh. What? Why was he afraid? Yeah, Golden well, Boys yeah, afraid. That's a good story. Oh, talk about like, who took yeah. that shot for him. Then. So <laughs> yeah, speaking of that, we went to a bar after uh, uh, one of the nights. Um, pretty much all the casters and Golden Boys like we were telling him like yeah, have this certain shot. It's called Dark Souls. Uh, at Meltdown uh, here in Cologne, Reaper style. and it's like the spite. I'll, I'll let Ben explain it actually, because Ben was the one to drink it for him <laughs> because he didn't do it. And Ben, you can, and you, no, no, even ZP had one. ZP had one in yeah. Golden Boy There's doesn't one. take he one. Ended up wow. one as well, uh, okay. which I think he regretted later. But Ben, so tell us about how that drink was. Uh, so you know how there's sometimes drinks that are purposely bad just to be like, hey, it's a bad drink that sucks. Uh, you should take it. This this oh, outdid all of those times a thousand. Oh my I'm not God. even kidding you. It's a wow. rite of passage. I'm not even kidding you because uh, first of all, it wasn't really a shot. It was probably like a double or a triple. It was like this. It big, was a drink. It's like this big glass. Um, second of all, it was fifty percent Tabasco sauce. Like oh. a full <laughs> shot of Tabasco in here. And Ooh. guess what the other part was? It's fucking absinthe. <laughs> it was absinthe. <laughs> I had probably like wow. the worst stomach ache after that. Like, I I can hold my alcohol pretty well, so it didn't it didn't completely obliterate me out on the spot. But the next day, I woke up. I'm like, I my there's pain. I have pain in my stomach because of all the acid and hot sauce that I just took. <laughs> um, I couldn't breathe for five seconds after I took it. Dude, like, I believe you. That's I crazy. I don't really uh, back down from challenges too often, so I'm like, whatever. I I'm, I'm great at this. I couldn't breathe for five seconds. It was like, yeah. So uh, if you ever go to the Meltdown Bar in Cologne, Germany, try to trick your friends into drinking this. <laughs> drinking I mean, the Dark Souls. All right. Definitely and we also had a fun game after that, didn't we, too? Well, you didn't have a fun game, but Mitch and I did. <laughs> he was in the bathroom after that. <laughs> what game was that, Jason? Uh, ben, do you want to say it? I don't know. We could kind of skip over it uh, if you want. I mean, I, I, Dude, I Ben's turning red. You definitely have bus. to say it. Uh, we played beer pong after, and Joe Miller uh, was on my team, <laughs> and he like talked, he talked himself up like crazy, like he was really good at beer pong. Let's just say he only hit one cup. Oh my and god! The team we oh. played against was the team we were playing against was very very good. <laughs> and uh, let's just say after the Dark Souls drink, I like wasn't fully there, uh, and he basically tricked me into drinking half of his cups, so I basically had like nine beers there too. Um, yeah, bad times. It was fun though. Times, though. Great time. so ben, it was fun, man. Ben was that, in that the was corner like the, the rest of the night, just, I was just like wondering coolest, where he uh, is. Crew of people. <laughs> we had this. Uh, we had this whole night out, and it was it was like fourteen commentators from different games just awesome. hanging out. Oh my god! Including Golden Boys. Nice. So Golden Boy was the smart one, is what you're trying to say now. Ben, <laughs> not not drinking that. Holy yes. crap! Um, all right. Well, uh, Ben, where can people find you? At Fish Sticks. Uh, I'm not sure when the next cast I'll be doing is. Nothing really on the radar at this point. Is there a break? I'm um, heading off to PAX this weekend as well. Mm -hmm. 
but I uh, I do want to start streaming more. Um, so you can follow me on Twitch at, as well at Fishsticks, same way it's spelled right there. So Cool. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for doing the show with me this week. And uh, Shade should be back next week, guys. You guys, Some of you guys have been wondering where Shade's been, been moving and doing all kinds of things like that involved with that. So uh, hopefully we'll see her back. Uh, but you can find my Twitter at ChamMV. Twitch uh, obviously is here. Uh, YouTube, ChamMV. Anything that ends in ChamMV, basically. You can, you can follow me or subscribe there. And the VODs will be on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ChamMV. And audios are on iTunes and and also on Google Android Podcasts. I do want to give a shout out to Exo Moyato, who was the last person to leave a review and a five stars for uh, the Overview Podcast on iTunes. And if you guys want to help out the show and you know don't have to donate anything, you can just leave a five star review and a, just a little short message. I really really appreciate that, and it helps people find the podcast in in the rankings there, at least whenever you search for Overwatch. Um, and that's going to be it, guys. Uh, actually, you can tune into my, uh, if you're into Hearthstone, you can tune into my Hearthstone podcast tomorrow but called Value Town, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, also on uh, the Temple Storm streams, if you, li- if you like it. So if you like Hearthstone, at least. I don't know I don't know how much an overlap there is between Overwatch and Hearthstone. I mean, it, they are two Blizzard products, but... Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. (laughs) Just let me know, I guess, if you guys do come over for the first time. But that's going to be it for the overview, guys. So for Jason Kaplan, Fishsticks, and myself, Chami MV, we'll see you next week. Later.